Welcome to Study Time, a televised home learning program produced by Rwanda Education Board. Hello students, welcome to the TV learning programs. I'm teacher Herbert. Uh, I'm going to be taking you through the barrage of senior three. And uh, we are still on the same unit, which is unit 10, and that is lesson two. So I will come in my lesson, and uh, the, the, the unit lesson is uh, the skin and the uh, homeostatic mechanisms. And lesson two is concerning about controlling the internal environment and uh, the water balance in the body. So I think you do remember, on the last lesson, we talked about uh, balancing or regulation of body temperature. We talked about when it is too hot, how does the body does by all means to regulate the body temperature. And uh, when it is too cold, I think you do remember some of the properties that the body does do in order to regulate the body temperature. So students, let's start our lesson of today, how to control the internal environment uh, within the body, how does the body tries to balance water and even water and osmotic pressure within the body. So the learning objectives of today, we're going to be able to explain a control of internal environment. If I talk about internal environment, what are the, these, these internal, value, internal variables that has to be controlled? We can have examples of these internal environment. We can talk about temperature. We can talk about pH. We can talk about glucose level in the blood. All those internal variables need to be balanced. We're also going to interpret some a graph. Uh, we have to interpret the graph. We have to interpret the graph. Uh, we have to interpret the graph of water in the body, control of, uh, of blood osmotic pressure. So these are the two learning objectives we're going to be discussing today. Uh, students, quickly let's understand what are internal environment and why should the internal environment has to be maintained constant. Maintaining, internal maintaining a constant internal environment, it involves the regulating of salts, regulating of water, uh, regulating of glucose, uh, glucose, and uh, these are the things that has to be regulated. These are internal environment. Regulation of internal environment is done either by endocrine system as well as by the nervous system. Student, I know uh, we talk about endocrine system. These are glands or endocrine glands. These are glands that produces some hormones. What are hormones? Hormones are chemical messengers. They are produced by the endocrine gland. And if they are produced by the endocrine gland, they move to the target organ to cause an effect. We also have the nervous system. When you talk about nervous system, it means I talk about the brain and the spinal cord. So the two things I'm talking about, the brain and the endocrine system, these are two systems that plays a big role in homeostasis, in maintaining the internal environment. I don't think that you've forgotten the word homeostasis. I said the word homeostasis comes from two Greek words, homeo, which, is mean, which means similar, and then stasis, which means at a standstill. You keep something balanced at a standstill. So the two organs I'm mentioning, uh, it is the endocrine system, and as well as the endocrine system uses hormones. I said hormones are chemical messengers. They are produced by endocrine gland, and they are responsible for doing the function of homeostasis in our body. So these things that I was talking about, salts, water, and even glucose level, uh, can be balanced in our body by either endocrine system or by the nervous system. Let's try to the internal environment. So once you talk about internal environment, it always has a normal level. If you talk about normal level, these are normal levels are called, if I talk about normal levels, it must be the internal environment must be have, have, have what you call normal levels. 
And these normal levels are sometimes called what you call the set point. The set point, there must be a point. It has to be set on. Any change from the set point activates a control system. Once there is a change in any, in any set point, once there is a, either a going down of the temperature below the set point, they need to be controlled. It has to, to activate the control system. Talk about the control system, these are the system that controls any slight change uh, in, the body, in the body, and uh, which returns the condition back to normal. Then the, the condition was not in a normal state. It has to be taken back to normal. And if it is taken back to normal, that one brings back to what you call a set point. Have you understood? Let us read what is written, what do you understand? The internal environment always has a normal level called a set point. Any change from the set point activates a control system which, which returns the condition back to a normal state. Have you understood? So any change in the internal environment activates a control system which returns these systems into a normal state, back to a normal state. Uh, re, uh, previously, we talked about temperature. And the temperature, we talked about what you call thermal, thermal regulation. If I talk about thermal regulation, what does it mean? That is regulating the internal, the internal the, the, regulating the temperature internally. At some state, it involves, it is involved in controlling the temperature in some of the gadgets, like in electric iron box and in air conditioners. You have ever seen these, uh, talk about these, uh, uh, these iron boxes, they are normally used to remove cleanses on a piece of cross. You have to do what you call regulating it. We have what you call air conditioners in the buildings, in the, the gadgets. These are also, they have to be balanced. So these also, our body does by all means to regulate this, this internal environment. This internal environment, I mentioned about temperature, one. I've mentioned about the pH. I've mentioned about the glucose, all right? So I talked about uh, the prime thermostat. The, the thermostat is a prime example of what you call a negative feedback. Student, I think we talked about negative feedback. What is negative feedback? What a negative feedback? Let me say something has been slowed down. It needs to be raised up. Something has been increased beyond the normal, the normal set. It is needed to be raised up. So that one is normally, we call it to be negative feedback. Let's have the definition of a negative feedback. A negative feedback is a process by which the body mechanisms regulates the change, the changing conditions from excess back to normal or from lower to extreme back to normal. Something has been increased beyond the normal. It needs to be lowered down. Something has been very low in our body. It, need, it is needed to be increased in our body. That one is called negative feedback. So negative feedback is responsible for decreasing the effect that causes that thing to be raised in body temperature or the glucose level. So it is, let us repeat, negative feedback is a process by which the body mechanism, the body mechanism regulates a changing, a changing condition from excess back to normal or from raw extremes back to normal. From high, bring it back to normal. Then from raw, you also turn it to normal. That one is referred to as a negative feedback mechanism. Let's have a positive feedback mechanism. Positive feedback mechanism is responsible for increasing the effect. It doesn't involve with decreasing. We can have an example of a, a positive feedback mechanism. Let's have when a baby is sucking milk from the, from the nika of the mother. What happens? It stimulates the production of the or it stimulates the mammary gland to produce milk. And that milk is going to be produced till when it is over. Let me just give an example of exocytosin hormone. What does exocytosin hormone do? 
in our body. Students think about exocytosis hormone. It causes a continuous contraction of the uterus during childbirth, all right? A positive feedback mechanism, feedback, on the other hand, in ending enhances or amplifies an effect by its own influence on a process that gives it rise. I said it is responsible for increasing the effect. It doesn't involve with the decreasing or increasing the effect. All negative feedback groups occurs in series of steps. These series of steps, I'm going to mention them. We have the stimulus. If I say stimulus, everybody knows what are stimulus. A change in environment. We have number two, which is the sensor. Then from sensor, we have three, which is the, the coordinator. Coordinator. There is the sensor, we have the sensor, we have, uh, let's have another one, which is the controller. We have controller. From the controller, we have the effectors. Effectors. From effectors, we have the last one. Effectors automatically, they bring the response. These are the steps of what you call uh, negative feedback. We have a response. So let us try to see all these things, how it happens. It's humorous. Any change in environment, anything that can cause a change in environment is referred to as a stimulus. After a stimulus uh, causes the change in environment, what happens? There's what you call a sensor. And after sensing it, what happens? It sends to the controller, which is supposed to be the brain. And the brain will, bring, will inform the responsible uh, muscles or glands to bring back the response. So that one will bring what you call to bring back the normal state. So let's go through these things. We have, uh, we, we started with the, the stimulus. There is the stimulus, which is a change that occurs. Once there's a change that occurs, I know some of you have ever touched a hot object. And if you touch a hot object, what happens? The stimulus will normally cause for you to withdraw your hand from a hot plate or a hot object. The temperature in the house can be increased. Once it increases, it is going to be detected as a stimulus. There is a sensor which detects the change. A sensor detects the change. And the stimulus is the one that will bring the change. The thermostat register the increase in temperature in the house, all right? So we have the controller. There is a controller which is just a response to the change. The controller is the one to inform the, the, the effectors to bring back the response, all right? Have you understood? So we have, there is effector, I said effectors can be muscles, it can also be glands, or the effectors will bring what you call a response. Let me just bring a scenario that brings the whole thing. You touch a hot object, there is a stimuli. Then after touching hot object, the stimuli, the skin will be acting as a sensor. It will send the information to the controller, which is the brain. The brain will bring the response, and the response will be informing the muscles to contract and you withdraw your hand from a hot plate or from a hot object. Thank you. Let's go to the chart that shows everything that, is, that you see from here. The chart is summarizing what I was been talking about. We have that, there, that arrow which is trying to show you the response which is going to be brought. There is, number one, is a stimulus, a change in the environment. Any change in the environment is a stimulus, all right? From there, we have the receptors. The receptors, these are the cells that detect and register the change. Receptors, these are the cells, it can just be the skin, which detects, and after detecting, it register the change. Number three, we have modulator. The modulator, these are the structures where the change is processed and, and the information is relied on. Let me give an example of modulator. We can have the brain is a modulator, all right? And uh, number four, we have the effectors. The effectors now are the one to, after receiving the information from the brain, from the modulator or from the controller, good, from the controller, and then organs or glands or tissues that are instructed to adjust and uh, to adjust the output uh, to the output or the secretion to cause an effect. Automatically, there must be an effect. And after that effect, 
what will be the last one? These are, the last one is supposed to be uh, the, the response, which is number five. The outcome of the adjustment. The temperature has been increased. It has been detected. It is going to be detected by, the, after detecting by the stimulus, which is, a, the stimulus is temperature. We have uh, the receptors. The skin, after detecting it, it is going to be sent where? To the modulators. Then from the modulators, the information is going to send where? So there, is, the modulators will, will just inform the organs and the glands, all right, to, to instruct, to adjust the output of the secretion to cause an effect. From there, we're going to have what you call responses. The responses will just bring what you call negative feedback. You can see from here, the dotted, the, the dotted lines indicates responses that, re, that removes the initial stimulus to a negative feedback. So the diagram is trying to show you a negative feedback mechanism. I try to use the, the temperature. Uh, that is say that we talked about these things. We talked about positive feedback mechanism. On the other hand, enhances and amplifies that process. And uh, well, then we have negative feedback, uh, negative feedback loops serves to keep a certain variables in checks and checks them. Take an example like temperature. In this case, the body has its own internal controller for maintaining its temperature, pH, I mentioned it, hormones, uh, hormones levels, and even blood, grow, uh, blood sugar. So all these things has to be maintained internally, it has to be maintained constant. Are you getting me, student? So now, we, we say that these and other internal variables, levels, at a homeostasis. It has to be kept at a homeostasis, at a balance, all right? This, uh, this is optimum internal state at which the body operates best. The internal state where the, oper the body operates, uh, operates best, these are called homeostasis. If these things are not kept constantly, it will affect the body metabolism as well as it will affect the body activities. So let's talk about, uh, I said the controller of homeostasis is most, in, uh, in most animals, is normally helped by a part of the brain which is called uh, hypo hypothalamus. Without this structure in the brain, organisms would have great difficulties. What does it mean? It means that absence of the hypothalamus in our body, we could more of the more of the internal environment will not be balanced. All right. So we need hypothalamus as a part of the of the brain, the part of the brain which is responsible for maintaining, controlling the internal environment within our body, regardless of external factors. Good? Let's go to homeostasis. Homeostasis is a negative, is a homeostasis, homeostasis is effectively only if the parts of the body that carry out these processes work and coordinate, work, work very well in a coordinated manner. So the body has to, to do all activities to do all what is required in order to maintain the internal environment so that some of the body activities, some of the body metabolism should not be affected. Good. This requires a communication between the organs, the tissues, and as well as the cells of the body. So the tissues, the organs, the organs, the tissues, the cells, they have to communicate together to maintain the internal environment constantly. All right? Regardless of external factors. All right? I said communication between, or between uh, different, different parts of the body is made possible by what you call a neuroendocrine system. These two words, neuro and endocrine system. Neuro means the, the, the nervous system and the endocrine system and as well as the endocrine system. So called because it consists of the nervous system as well as the endocrine system. So, the nervous system is composed of the brain and the nerve cells. If I, talk, if I make about nervous system, I mean the brain and the spinal cord. So, it is made up of the brain as well as the nerves. The nerves, are, they transmit messages from one part of the body to another part of the body in the form of what you call electrical impulses. 
So the nerve messages, nerves carry what you call nerve impulses. These nerve impulses, they are electric current. They move like uh, electric impulses, which are, which are going to be carried from one part of the body to another part of the body. The endocrine system is made up of glands, all right? These glands, they produce what you call hormones, are chemical substances released into the blood and are transported to virus body tissues and organs to cause an effect, all right? Hormones bring about changes in the functioning of specific tissues, all right, and organs. Homeostatic processes, we include what you call osmotic pressure, a control of sugar levels, and as well as balancing of water. Let's talk about uh, blood osmotic pressure, balancing of water in our body. The kidney is an excreted organ. If I say excreted organ, it removes waste product from our body. The function of the kidney is to keep a concentration of substances in the body constantly. These substances include water, it includes mineral salts. When the concentration of these substances uh, is controlled, the smooth pressure within the tissues is also regulated, all right? So we have to, to balance, to strike a balance. Blood and the tissue fluid must be balanced, must be kept at a constant osmotic pressure to avoid what you call an unnecessary movement of water into and out of the cells. Because once water is moved from one cell to another cell, once, one, no, once water moves from cells and goes to the tissue fluid, what happens? Automatically, the cell will become dry and it become connected, and that one will cause what you call shrinking of the cell. Once also, the water moves from tissue fluid and goes to the cells, the body cells. What happens? The body cells will also can, can also burst. And once they burst, you are, it can lead into death. I said, uh, once the, the, the blood tissues and fluid must be kept, must be kept at a constant osmotic pressure to avoid the necessary movement of water into and out of the cell by osmosis. If, for example, the osmotic pressure of these of liquid is, is higher than that of the cell content. There's what you call hypertonic. If I say hypertonic, it means there's more water and less solid concentration. What will happen? The cell will lose water by osmosis to the body fluid. And if it loses to the water to the body fluid, it means the cell will become connected and dehydrated and eventually they will not perform their functions as it is required. If this continues for a wrong, for a wrong normal cells functioning is going to be affected, as I mentioned, because the cells are becoming connected and uh, the body become dehydrated, and this can cause death. If there is also, uh, it, is also, it is also very important that the amount of water and, uh, and uh, hence the osmotic pressure between the cells and the body fluids are balanced, are, are balanced, so it means that this is osmotic, uh, osmotic normal for normal cells activity. We have some special senses that detects that one. These, uh, these senses are, are called osmotic receptor cells, which detects any change in water and the water bodies or osmotic pressure of the body fluid. Uh, we normally know that automatically, when you talk about these things, that how would we balance the water in our body? The, boy water in our, the water in our body is balanced by a hormone which is called antidiuretic hormone, ADH. ADH, which is antidiuretic diuretic hormone. That antidiuretic hormone is responsible for balancing the amount of water in the body, antidiuretic hormone. That hormone is produced by the, by the pituitary gland and is responsible for balancing the amount of water in our body, we can talk about, I said, which is initiated and appropriate corrective mechanisms in the kidney. Regulating of water in the body is under the control of antidiuretic hormones, as mentioned it. This hormone is produced by the pituitary gland and located at the base of the brain. ADH, the amount of water absorbed in the kidney, is going to be summarized in the diagram quickly. This is a diagram. There is too much water in the body. That is A. On B, we have uh, 
less amount of water, little amount of water in the body. Once it is detected by the hypothalamus, it sends the signals, the pituitary gland, and the pituitary gland releases ADH into the blood. And once it releases into the blood, that one we're going on that side. When there's too much water in there, in our body, the nephron reabsorbs, reabsorbs less water. Once there is less production of ADH, it means less water is going to be absorbed. And uh, eventually, more water is going to reach into the urinary bladder. And you find you're going to urinate. The urine, which has got large amount of dilute, of dilute urine. But when there is, there is too little water in the body, what does it? The pituitary gland releases ADH, antidiuretic common. The nephron, which is the basic functional unit of the kidney, does what you call reabsorption of water. And now once it reabsorbs water, what happens? Meaning that the, in the urine, it will just be having less amount of water at its little amount of, of concentrated urine. You're going to urinate urine which is more concentrated. You have ever seen when it is, when it is too hot during dry season, you net a urine which is more yearish because it, there's less more water because you lose water during sweating. Quickly, let's talk about the pituitary gland. As I mentioned, the pituitary gland increases the secretion of antidiuretic hormone into the body. So as I mentioned, when the ADH reaches into the nephron, in the kidney, it causes the increase of permeability of the nephron walls to water. A nephron is going to do what you call reabsorption of water, and it means that once water is absorbed, it means that less water is going to reach into, into, the, into, the, into the urinary bladder. So we have diabetes. Once there is less water being discharged into our urine, a person is going to suffer from what you call a diabetes spedas. When the pituitary gland releases a very little ADH or fails to release, release completely, what happens to the kidney? The nephrons are unable to absorb the required amount of water, and this one we read into what you call uh, excessive large volume of dilute urine, and this is known as what, that one is known as a diuresis. The urine can also be described as testless or inspidus. That's the name what you call diabetes inspidus. Let's go to the home assignment. We have almost like five, almost like four numbers. What is the diuresis? That is number one. Number two, what is the negative feedback? So you have some objectives you choose on these objectives. Number three, rate two body system that regulates homeostasis R. The last one is rate in full ADH. So students, thank you very much for watching and listening. Enjoy the rest of the day. See you next time.